Though the graphics have improved, they are still not that amazing in Halo Infinite, but is that by design or by accident? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. With the recent Halo Infinite development update focusing on the PC side of things, we had some new screenshots which do look awesome at first, but now the community has had some time to kind of dive deep into these pictures and really see what we're looking at here. And there's been some concerns that have been brought up with some of the graphical fidelity again with Halo Infinite. Are these issues warranted or is just the community being a little extra picky? Well, in this video, I want to provide more context to what we've seen now and then, and also what looks to be 343's design philosophy behind the graphics of Halo Infinite. If you guys like these analytical kind of videos or news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as you ramp up to the the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. Well, let's see what the main issue is people are having now with the graphics and we'll compare it to what we've seen previously. So this is the image in question. Now, first glance, this image is jaw dropping amazing, right? At first glance, you're like, wow, this art style looks fantastic. We even have like the old school Guardian coming back as well. Looks like the AR has been touched up and changed a little bit on top of that. But as time has gone on, some people have kind of picked out some interesting things that are certainly worth noting when it comes to the graphics within this game. Mainly, it's been this brute that's kind of caused some issues. When we zoom in on him right here, you can kind of see that, honestly, like I don't know if it's coming through the video super well, but he's actually kind of smooth. There's not a whole lot of detail to this character. Like, it's kind of actually kind of hard to tell the difference between like his skin color and the leather straps that he has on and things like that. As in the detail of the texture itself, or the, the leather of the straps looks about similar as like the smoothness of the skin that he has. The armor's not really showcasing the whole lot of beat up or dirt or usage. Like there is some wear and tear on him, but it's kind of really unnoticeable. And also there's really not a whole lot of shadowing happening underneath him as well. Like as you can see, like right underneath the foot right there, you would expect like a really heavy shadow under underneath that of some sort, not there at all. But you do have at least some shadowing happening right here. So a lot of people are currently having concerns about whether or not the graphics have honestly have been improved with Halo Infinite. And when we have the gameplay reveal in June for E3, are we going to come across the same pitfalls that we had with the previous July demo reveal? And Obviously, like the hardest thing to tell about this is that this is a very zoomed in image at something that's kind of at mid far range, really, because this is honestly like right here. This is about like what you'll be seeing right here. So there's a reason why like distances really matter within gaming and also the level of detail that you will see. You're not going to see 100% detail at super far away. It's a way for games to conserve power usage within your game. So then things are super far away or low res, low poly. And as you get closer, they get high res. This is something that games have been doing really ever since like 3D graphics have been really around pretty much. So really 343 needs to balance out uh, how much detail can you show at once time while also conserving power so then your PC isn't being absolutely melted by this game. And if we look at previous images of Brutes within Halo Infinite, you might be a little bit more relieved of what we'll see. Well, here's one of the images that was revealed uh, as soon as the gameplay reveal was shown after E3 of 2020. And this time you get actually a really close up look of the brute right here on the left side. You really get a chance to see that level of detail that was not really coming across with that brute that's in the gameplay right there. You see the bumps on his skin, the veins coming in through right there, the different texturing of the skin as well clear differential between like the bodysuit armor and the leather straps and things like that. No facial hair compared to what we saw just now. That brute definitely had like a goatee to kind of give him some more character and that looked just like a little bit less smooth and more classic brute style. And the wear and tear and the armor definitely comes through. And this is before the announcement of the delay when these screenshots were released. So that level of detail is in the game, but it really kind of comes through at closer ranges. We're at mid ranges. Not so much, as you can kind of see with this brute over here on the left, on the right side over here, a little less detail, but you can still see like a little bit of a mesh with the bodysuit as well, the wear and tear on the armor. But that level of detail you can see is there, and this is again before the announcement of the delay was when this screenshot was released. But within the screen, same screenshot, you can see what I'm talking about. Where at a distance, things look a little bit low res, low poly, low texture kind of thing. As you zoom into the back right here. 
just just off in the distance not really that far away you can see these trees looking pretty blobby as well the rocks looking very smooth like these little green patches right here just look like they're just kind of sitting on top of something like it's not really well done but at not that far of a distance that's when you really start noticing the low poly low res textures come in to conserve energy and have what's necessary in front of you show up in high res high texture another concerning thing that i brought up with my initial review of the development update was of this image right here now when you first look at this you're like this looks fantastic and of course, this is pretty much like the distance you'll be seeing things, honestly, if you're playing on ultra wide. So again, that comes at that issue of distance far away, number of polygons on your screen really determines the definition of each character that you will see. I think we kind of zoom in on a screen right here like this, right? This is generally what you will be seeing for your typical 16 by 9 format. And at this distance, things look great. But when you zoom in is when you kind of start noticing a little bit of details kind of being lost. I pointed this out previously with these grunts or that weird thing I'm actually more concerned about is that they're all in the exact same attack position which is kind of odd, which may kind of break that immersion that we're looking for when it comes to playing this game. You can see this grunt in the back has the exact same pistol positioning as this grunt, as the same as this grunt, as same as this grunt right here, as well as this grunt. But this one has like his hips a little turned a little differently, but you can kind of see how they're all like in the exact same position. This is something that concerns me. If they all do the exact same animation at the exact same time, it just breaks that immersion of the game. And you can also kind of see that like this grunt right here, like there's not really that much in the way of shadowing or interacting with the light of the environment. Obviously this is rather low lighting and kind of even toned for the most part. So there's not gonna be any heavy shadows like a midday time of lighting, but you can still see that like, I would expect a little bit more shadowing underneath them at some point, especially with this jackal right here in the middle as well. Okay, and they're so far away that honestly when you're about this far away, you won't really pick up that much of kind of detail when you're actually playing the game, but it's something worth taking note of. Here's another example of things at a distance not looking too great for Halo Infinite. This was from the February update. We got a bunch of new screenshots and you can see right here like this upfront image looks amazing. The grass looks fantastic. This Warthog looks great. The lighting on the grass right, over, right on here on the right side. Let me remove my webcam. You can kind of see looks fantastic as well. But if you kind of zoom in on this forerunner structure over here on the left side, it does look pretty low res. And at this low resolution and low poly count, it may kind of be something you might come across when it comes to playing this game. Again, this is very typical within games to have very low res, low poly count objects at a far distance where, so when you're playing at this distance, this looks fine. But when you look it up close, like a blown up image, it may look a pretty low res. One image I actually had a really big concern on was this image in particular. This was also released before the announcement of the delay as well and some website that kind of got like a special little picture from 343. This one I want to take note of the ring itself where you will definitely see some significant improvements right here. So this is like an in-game screenshot you know, right before sunset. And if you take, a, everything looks all right. You know, again, the lighting doesn't look that great. The grass looks kind of flat, but the thing is, look at this distance image of this ring. What's going on with this ring right here? There is no detail. It looks like a smeared Bob Ross almost image just kind of painted on top of this. So there's no definition of landforms or water or anything. It's just all smeared across and looks like a glacial formation just throughout the whole thing. It's not how it's supposed to look. But if you look at this image from the February update, you can definitely see already that there is a lot better definition within the ring itself looking like it's part of the landmass that you're on. This looks like something that you can actually go to because of the detail that's there you got you see these large lakes these islands looks like maybe some kind of like clouding or some kind of weathering that happens on here as well so there is some level of detail which certainly has been improved since the uh, reveal that we had previously. I also want to come back to this image because this actually is a very important image to take note of because this is not even at like your proper max settings actually with this particular image. Take note of the assault rifle positioning, the background and everything else because when we look at the PC settings that were shown, it really showcases what kind of settings we're looking at with this image. Now here we are with the image that we're talking about right here. Now you can obviously see they have like the 1080p resolution which is very important to take note of, the 85 
five frames. And we'll take a look at the other settings that we're gonna be showing in just a minute here. But take a look at this image in the background, right? Looks quite familiar to the image we just were looking at. So these images that we're looking at for these ultra wides, they're playing at 1080p, which is very important to take note of. I'm actually very surprised that they're doing screenshots in 1080p when you're trying to showcase your game to the world, you would think you would do 4K. That's the one you would want to do. 1440p at the least. Here's an, a quick snapshot of the settings that they're running with this screenshot. As you can see right here, the exact same background right here, the assault rifle in the same position, the same Forerunner guarding in the background, these V shapes right here. So these are the settings that we're looking at right here. So we're seeing anti-aliasing on high, not ultra, because there are ultra settings with this game. But yeah, you have texture filtering, texture quality, Geometry quality. Reflections are actually a little bit lower on high. Depth of field is a little bit lower on high. Shadow quality is on ultra. Dynamic lighting is on medium. So if you're having any issues with these screenshots on the lighting, that's because it's on medium. It's not even on the highest setting. Which again, I'm shocked that 343 is not doing screenshots on the ultimate settings they could possibly do. They're screenshots. They don't need to have excellent frame rates. Okay, so with all that analyzing said and done, why is Halo Infinite not going to be really that impressive graphically when it comes to this game? And that's mainly because the game is free to play, right? The multiplayer is free to play. And obviously, you want to have a wide audience of people that want to jump in and play your game. Not everyone's going to be able to afford your high-end PCs to be able to watch these graphics in just amazing detail. So I don't think that Halo Infinite is specifically designed to look jaw-dropping amazing like Cyberpunk or like Battlefront 2 or even like any kind of Battlefield game. It's meant to be a game that's supposed to cater to, well, console players average PC builds, but also have the ability to crank up the quality as well. But Halo Infinite not being insane on the graphics means that there's more accessibility for more people to get a chance to play this game. Think of all the other free to play games that are popular that are out there that people like to play. You have Fortnite, Apex Legends, CSGO, Valorant as well. And the only one that's somewhat graphically intense is Warzone. And even then I'm rocking a 1080 Ti and I can hold a solid 60 frames at 1440p. So that's actually one thing with the art style that 343 needs to take in consideration that they want to be able to have this game accessible to the masses. And most people don't have these super high end graphics cards, especially since the 3000 series for like Nvidia is nearly impossible to find right now. Now, do I want this game to look amazing? Absolutely. I think it does look amazing. I just think that they're probably lowering down some detail and texture resolution. So then it's not so insane on your system. I don't think 343 is designing Halo Infinite's graphics to be cut edge to where they're just like pushing your system to the absolute limit and that's by design and so then more people get a chance to play Halo Infinite and have the game more accessible to more people and honestly Halo's never really been that best looking game on any system it holds together rather well like I still think Halo 3 looks great but still wasn't the best looking game on the 360 back in the day either but does Halo Infinite look jaw-dropping astonishing good not really does it look great? Absolutely. And I believe that is by design. So if you guys like these kind of videos and want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo or you're missing any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I can link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.